mountain top or valley or day or night or good times or bad times the same god and he is there for you and tonight is going to roll all those problems away dry your tears away dry all those confusions away in your life because the god of the mountain is the god of the valley when things go wrong he makes them right for the god of the good times is the god of the bad times and the god of the day is the god of the night Praise the Lord, the God of the day is a God of the night. The God of the mountain is a God of the valley. When things go wrong, He makes them right. For the God of the good times is a God of the bad times too. And the God of the day is the God of the night. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for all our brothers, all our sisters, all the youths, all the children, all our fathers and mothers, all our pastors, overseers, and everybody, Lord, our workers, our singers, our orchestra, choir. We thank you for everyone, ushers and security people, kitchen workers, everybody, Lord. We come to celebrate the power of the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. And Lord, we're going to discover anyone in the valley, you'll bring us up. Any one of the mountain, you keep your sunshine upon us in Jesus' name. Anyone passing through good times, now I pray your good time will never end in Jesus' name. And if you are passing through any bad time, I pray that tonight your bad time will be turned around in Jesus' name. Your day of prosperity will never end. Your day of joy will never end. And your day of success will never end. Deliverance and dominion every day for you in Jesus' name. Your night and of adversity is turned around. And your night of sorrow is turned around. Your night of tears turned around. And the night of impossibility turned around in Jesus' name. The song of the Lord will always be in your mouth. The joy of the Lord always in your heart. And the victory on the mountain in the valley, the victory in good times and bad times, and the victory also in the day and the night will be for you every time in Jesus' name. I pray that every one of you will receive the spirit of the conqueror. You will conquer. You have conquered already. You will keep on conquering for the rest of your life. Good time, bad time, mountain, valley, day, night, God will never leave you. He'll see you through. Lord, confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I see that people like people, they only clap at the end of the meeting. When it's beginning, no, we don't clap. Put your hands together and clap for Jesus. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Clap your sorrows away. Clap the night away. And clap the sickness away. And clap all the sins of the devil. Clap everything away. You are victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you and remain seated in the blessing of the Lord. Tonight we're talking about irresistible prayer from the throne room. Irresistible prayer from the throne room. We're looking at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. That's telling us where Jesus is at this time. 
what Jesus has at this time. What authority belongs to Jesus at this time? And he says, all power, all authority belongs unto him. Mark chapter 16, verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and he sat on the right hand of God. God. That's his place. That's his position. He's sitting right now on his throne. And from that throne room, he's making intercession for you and for me and for his church. That's why we're talking about this prayer. Irresistible prayer from the throne room because Jesus Christ was received up into heaven. And he sat down on the right hand of God. Ephesians chapter 1. And read from verse 20. Ephesians 1, verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. There should be no doubt in your mind from all those verses of scripture where Christ is, where Christ is seated, that right now he is on the throne. It tells us in verse 21, far above all principality and power that he is, is sitting on the throne room, untouchable by any power, any principality, and anything that can weaken his position of authority is far above, far above all authority and all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. The Lord Jesus Christ is far above every personality, whether in the sky or in the sea or land or anywhere, is above every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church that is for the benefit of the church the throne is the seat of power when we're talking about the throne, we're talking about the very seat of authority. Christ intercedes for us. Seated on the throne, he is always answered whenever he prays. Even when he was on earth, he said, My Father, I know you always answer me. How much more when he is seated on the throne of majesty on high, he is praying for you today. He wishes the best for you. He, does, he desires the best for you. He prays the best for you spiritually and physically. And you are going to have that in Jesus' name. And then when we pray, you know, it, it depends on where you are when you pray. In your mind, with your understanding, in your face, in your doubt, in thinking about yourself, where do you pray? Where do you think you are when you are praying? Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see, there are people, they have this idea and this notion. They are far away from God. And then they are sending message SOS. Save our soul unto a far away God. And they don't know whether God is answering them, hearing them or not. Or they think they are like Jonah in the depths of the sea. Or they are like Job. I look for God here. I can't find him. I look on this side. I can't find him. And they say, God, where are you? Or they think like they are like David. 
I'm in the midst of multitudes of enemies. They're gaping at me and gazing at me like lions. They want to drink up my flesh. They don't understand where they are. But we have settled it now, number one, that Jesus Christ is seated on the right hand of majesty. And we were seated with him. He has raised us up. He has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And it is from that throne room we are praying, we are making intercession. Irresistible prayer from the throne room. The three points we are going to look at. Number one, the great intercessor on the throne. The great intercessor on the throne. Number two, is great intercession for our triumph is great intercession for our triumph number three our guided intercession from the throne our guided intercession which you were praying and we're not just praying according to our minds we're praying in a guided way it guides us into the kind of intercession we ought to make the kind of prayer we ought to pray. Number one, the great intercessor on the throne. Uh, we have found many people that have prayed in Bible days. They were intercessors. We can, we can think about Moses. Where was he? He was in the wilderness praying for the children of Israel. They had gone away from the Lord. He came back from the mountain top and then he came to the valley. And he was in the wilderness there, and he began to say, Lord, I know the people have gone astray. They've gone to worship idol. Lord, have mercy on them. And God answered. But when he was praying, he was not sitting on the throne. He was not standing beside the heavenly father. He was in the wilderness. We're thinking about, jo about Joshua, great intercessor. The people of God, they have gone to Ai. And then they have been defeated. 36 of them were killed. And then he came and then he went on the ground. He wasn't on the throne. He was lying on the ground. And he put dust and ashes upon himself. And said, oh God, what am I going to do? When the children of Israel, when they turned their backs against their enemy. And then the enemies will all circle us and encompass us. And they're going to destroy us because of this defeat. And the Lord said, get up. There is sin in the camp. There is an Achan that had done something wrong. That's why you have the, the evil coming upon you. Take away that cause of defeat. And then I will answer you. You know, he was not on the throne. And then we're thinking about Daniel in Babylon. The Babylon of all places. That was an occultic place. I do not trust place. An evil place. A place of spiritual darkness. But he prayed. And he said, Oh Lord, we have seen. Yours is mercy. Ours is confusion. He was making intercession. But now we come to our own high priest. Greater than Moses. Our great high priest. Greater than Joshua. Our great high priest. And he's greater than Daniel. And then he's gone up to heaven. And it's from that place of authority and power. He's making intercession for us. The point is this, if God answered Moses in the wilderness, he'll answer Christ on the throne. If God answered Joshua, when there was sin in the camp, just by the side of Jericho, he'll answer Jesus on the throne. If God answered Daniel in Babylon, he'll answer Jesus Christ as a praise for you, praise for me and praise for the church. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 34, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. See that? He is now at the right hand of God. And there at the right hand of God is making intercession for us. When we talk about Jesus Christ praying for us, all that many people think about is John chapter 17. Yes, he prayed for us there. He was on earth at that time. 
Some people think about when he was on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yes, he prayed. He prayed for sinners to be forgiven. He was on the cross. But now from the earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. And now he sits on the right hand of majesty on high. When he was on earth, he prayed, he was answered. When he was on the cross, he prayed, he was answered. And now he's gone to the Father in heaven, seated on his throne. How much more will he be answered at this time? And I pray that you will realize all the fruit of the prayer of Jesus for you in Jesus' name. Look at this, verse 34 again. Who is he that condemneth? When you give your life to the Lord, and when you abide in the Lord, and the devil is coming with accusation, condemnation, and when you are living in the word of God, maybe your mind, you have a weak mind, and your mind is saying, pointing to this and this and this, condemnation over condemnation, and the devil wants to take advantage of that, because he's the accuser of the brethren. Then he says, it is Christ that died. And thank God he died for you. And then he says, Christ that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who is also making intercession for us, for you, for me, for everyone, for the church. And I pray that the prayer of Jesus will be answered for you. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the only places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but 